Bismillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ve men temassaka bi sunnetihi ila yevmiddin amma ba'd fe inna astakal hadithi kitabullah ve khayrul hedi hediyu Muhammed sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve şerral umuri muhdathatuha ve kulla muhdathatin bid'a ve kulla bid'atin dolala ve kulla dolalatin fil nar I commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment Indeed, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad, salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi. My beloved brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we're going to continue insha'Allah ta'ala with the journey of journeying, the journey of the hearts traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at these 40 hadith that are focused on the heart insha'Allah ta'ala. Bismillah. Ask you brothers and sisters to bear with me today. A little bit, uh, been working him meeting after meeting today. Alhamdulillah. Allah bring benefit from it all. But there's a hadith here, inshallah ta'ala, that is found in Sahih ibn Majah. That qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna ma summi al qalba min taqallubihi inna inna ma mathlu al qalbi mathlu rishatin bifalatil. تعلقت في أصل شجرة يقلبها الريح ظهرا لبطن. That the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the heart was given the name because of its constant fluctuation. Okay, so the heart, قلب, the word قلب, it was given the name because of the constant fluctuation. The heart is like a feather in the wilderness at a base of a tree. That continues to be turned over and over again by the wind, right? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that the heart is something that is constantly fluctuating. It is changing between one state and another, subhanAllah. And that it is like a feather out in the open at the base of a tree that when the wind comes and blows hard, that the feather continues to turn around and around and around and around like this, subhanAllah. Meaning it is not in one steady place, subhanAllah. So the heart yataqallab is always changing and fluctuating. It is always agitated, right? Subhanallah Rabbil Azim. So he goes on, the Shaykh, to say, Allahu Akbar. He says that the heart is the most important part of our body, right? And we covered this in the last hadith. The heart is the most important part of our body. It is also the most volatile and unpredictable, subhanAllah. It is the most volatile and unpredictable. And it is the reason that we need to pay great attention to the heart. We need to be people who are always vigilant over our own hearts to make sure that we know what state, what condition our heart is in, subhanAllah. We were just talking a little bit earlier, subhanAllah, myself and some others, alhamdulillah, uh, imma, about the state of the heart and the state of the Muslims, especially the converts, right, subhanAllah. And it is something about the heart, right? That we need to, inshallah, kind of get our heart involved and in the business, inshallah ta'ala, so that we can surrender and we can commit and we can, mashallah, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complete and wholeheartedly, right? But the heart, subhanallah, has to be committed 100%, right? As Allah says, udukhulu fi silmi kaf, enter completely, wholeheartedly, right? Subhanahu rabbil azim, Allahu akbar. Right, even when the when the Bedouins they said the the Bedouin Arabs said to the Prophet, uh, meant to I believe." He said, "Don't say you believe, right? Rather say aslam to, right? Rather say that you have accepted, you have submitted yourself somewhat, right? Because iman has not yet entered your heart, Allah Akbar, right? So the iman has to enter the hearts, brothers and sisters, inshallah Taala, right? Because this heart yataqallab is always fluctuating." It's always flipping up and down, up and down, up and down, subhanAllah. So we need to be vigilant of where the heart is and it is unpredictable, subhanAllah. He goes on to say, the Shaykh, he said, when it comes to the heart, the name given to it in Arabic signals its key feature and characteristics. 
if it is not its most important and dangerous quality, right? It's its key feature, but yet it's dangerous quality. Why? Because the heart is never stable. The heart is always between one state and the next, inshallah ta'ala. But the believer is trying to find the sense of stability with his heart or with her heart, inshallah, right? So he says that um, the heart in Arabic is called qalb, as the meaning and as the hadith explains, what keeps turning and changing consistently, right? The heart continuously moves from one emotion to another, from one intent to its opposite in the span of minutes or even seconds, subhanAllah. And this is taqallub, fluctuation, demonstrates how unpredictable and weak our hearts really are. Allahu Akbar. The example that the Prophet ﷺ gave of this feather is carried by the wind in an empty flat land. The wind blows its hardest in an empty space. And as the wind blows, the feather is helpfully tossed into the air, flipped around, right? Like this, subhanAllah. And the heart is, the, is also the most vulnerable organ because it is unstable and easily susceptible to outside influences. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. So the heart is susceptible to outside influences. And this is one of the main reasons that Subhana Rabbil Azim, as reverts and converts to this faith, inshaAllah ta'ala, we need to make sure whom we are allowing access to our hearts. Who are we giving access to our hearts? Right? The Prophet said, um, let every person look to who they befriend. Farrajulu ala dini khalili. Right? Because a man is on the way of the, or the religion of his friend. Right? If you're lending your heart to these individuals, subhanAllah, and they are not righteous individuals, they are not good practicing Muslims, and they are struggling, or they may just be off of it, your heart may be susceptible to deviation because shaitan is consistently whispering and pulling at the strings of the hearts. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So we cannot just give this heart to whomever we want. We don't do it with love, <laughs> right? When we fall in love, we just don't fall in love with anybody, right? But we fall in love and we're very careful about who we're going to give our complete heart, our complete soul and mind to, right? Because they're going to be the partner for the rest of our lives. But more important than your partner, than your spouse, whom you're giving your heart to and your all to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is more important than all of that. And we should be giving our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100% completely. Not a portion, not a part, not 25%, not 50, not 60, not 70, not 80, not even 99.9. .9. We should be giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100% of our hearts. Why? Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never break our hearts. It isn't like when we fall in love with a human being that the human being may in fact break your heart. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mashallah, He is the repairer of the hearts. He is the caretaker of the hearts. He is the maintainer of the hearts. He is in control of the hearts. So when you give your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are placing it in the best of hands. Allahu Akbar. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith that can be found um, in Al-Silsila Al-Sahihah, and Shaykh Al-Albani said it is Sahih, he says, the heart of the child of Adam is more volatile and quicker to change than a boiling pot of water. And you know it doesn't take much for the water to boil, right? The Prophet is saying, the heart is more volatile and quicker to change than that water reaching that boiling point, subhanAllah. He says, and because of this, the heart is similarly in a state of complete agitation. The heart is the most active part of our body. The heart never stops working, subhanAllah. He says, we can shut our eyes, we can shut our mouths, 
but we cannot stop thinking and reacting to the world around us. The heart is always going, subhanAllah, right? You have those individuals who say, subhanAllah, I feel like I, I wake up and I'm exhausted, right? Because your, 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 your soul, your heart is, 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 is being agitated even in your sleep, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. And he says, the heart intends, changes its intent, intends something new. And constantly struggles with his decisions and their consequences. There is also an anxiety that it inhabits in the heart and does not leave easily. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah. He says, indeed, the human was created with an unrestrained self, Allahu Akbar, full of fear when touched by evil, full of greed when touched by good, except for those who pray, Allahu Akbar. Prayer, my beloved brothers and sisters, it helps to keep the heart balanced. Prayer helps to keep the heart balanced. It helps to keep the heart linked with its creator, with its maker. And without this prayer, we are not balanced individuals. We'll be all over the place, subhanAllah. Prayer is the point of the day when life has been so hectic that we can kind of come and settle down. Find a moment of tranquility, find a moment of peace by surrendering your heart to the Almighty in that moment of salah. This is why Ihsan is so important. Ihsan, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is to worship Allah as if you can see Him. Your heart in that moment is completely involved in the worship, so much so that it is as if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you. You know that you can't. But your prayer is as if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that He is present, you know that He is watching, you know that He is hearing, you know that He is vigilant, you know that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in that moment He is there with you by way of His knowledge, by way of His sight, by way of His hearing. Right? SubhanAllah. And this is why it is so important, SubhanAllah, to... to Make sure that the heart is involved in that very important action of ibadah. Even when you make dua, even when you make dua, subhanAllah, you have to make dua from a place in your heart. You cannot just be making dua, just running words off of the lips, right? Whatever comes to mind, just say them. No, it needs to be from a place of the heart because you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're presenting yourself in need to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. You're presenting yourself broken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're telling Allah, Ya Allah, I'm in need, you, in need of you, Ya Allah. This heart is not stable. This heart is not, you know, it's uncontrollable. This heart is susceptible to pain, susceptible to misguidance, susceptible to deception, susceptible to deviance, susceptible to hurt, susceptible to anger, susceptible to all types types of things, subhanAllah. And it is the very reason that the heart must be present. He says, the heart easily panics. It lacks patience in the face of trouble and loses hope quickly. Aren't we like that, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah? We lack patience and we lose hope so fast, subhanAllah. Something happens and we're like, yeah, Allah, subhanAllah, wa bihamdi, I can't believe this, oh my God. Right? Rather than saying, okay, let me understand what's happening, let me give it a moment, right? There's a story that they say, inshallah ta'ala, it's correct, with Abu Hanifa, radiallahu anhu, that they say that they came and they told him that his house was burning down and his place of residence and that he just stood quietly. And the man is like, yeah, Abu Hanifa. <laughs> Like, I'm talking to you. I'm telling you that your home, your residence, it's burning down and you're sitting here quiet. And when Abu Hanifa answers him, he says, I had to check my heart. I had to what? I had to check and verify with my heart that it was pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before I can answer you. I didn't want to be hasty in my response. I wanted to check my heart 
I wanted to make sure that my Iman was okay, that my Iman was strong, that I'm believing and having certainty in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever hits me, it was meant for me. I couldn't have escaped it, that there's something better at the end of the line for إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ yusra, right? That at, at, after hardship, there's ease. I had to make sure that my heart had all of these things within this vessel. Because remember the first hadith, right? The heart is king. The heart is king. And then he goes on saying, and it also panics when good things happen and it cannot share what it has. The heart is it, the anxiety of the heart is its lack of trust in anything around it, a constant apprehension of things going wrong, subhanAllah. And he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had told us regarding the heart as well, because this is an action of the heart. He says, love your loved ones in moderation, because perhaps one day you may have to hate them. And hate your hated ones in moderation, because one day you may have to love them, right? That action of love and hate in the heart, right, is an action that at times may have to be switched, that person whom you love, that the Prophet ﷺ used to love his family and his uncles, and they stood up against him, they fought against him, they tried to kill him, they tried to assassinate him, they tried to... Right? All of these different things, subhanAllah. The same thing with his enemies. You had Abu Sufyan, right, and his enemies, and they were so staunch against him. And then all of a sudden, they accept Islam. Look at Wahshi, Wahshi kills the mo one of the most beloved people to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in battle, Hamza radiallahu an. So naturally the Prophet had something in his chest. But and then Wahshi accepts Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because he is Nabiullah, he had to be merciful insha'Allah ta'ala with Wahshi and he had to love Wahshi because Wahshi was now a believer, Allahu Akbar. Right, subhanAllah, to show how the believer is. He says, how can our heart, the most important part of our body, also be the most unstable? Right, the heart is the most important, but how can it also be the most unstable? He gives a point here where he says, the heart is the arena where shaitan is continuously whispering and sending his soldiers of doubt and worldly desires. It is also the arena where the angel of Allah reminds us of virtue uh, and the hereafter. And he says, it is why the Prophet Sallallahu said that shaitan has a connection to, um, to influence on the, child of, on, the ch on the child of Adam and the angel has a connection to influence as well. The connection and influence of shaitan is the promise of evil and the denial of truth. And the connection and influence of the angel is the promise of goodness and the acceptance of truth. So whoever finds hit this, let them thank and praise Allah. And whoever finds other than that, then let him seek protection from shaitan. As Allah says in the Quran, shaitan promises you poverty and commands you to commit indecency. And Allah promises you forgiveness and bounty from him. Shaitan wants you to commit indecency, O Muslim brother and sister. We have brothers and sisters who have been in Islam for a few years, for, you know, maybe for a few years, and then all of a sudden, subhanAllah, they stop practicing Islam. And you're like, what happened? The heart. And people say, well, you don't know what's in my heart. I don't. Wallahi, I don't. Only Allah knows what's in your heart, and that is what is scary, brother and sister. That if we are not practicing this faith, if we are not believing the way we're supposed to believe, not only internally, but externally as well. Because the internal affects the external, as we mentioned last week. Right? That we are proving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where our hearts are. We cannot allow shaitan to win in this battle over our hearts. We need to protect it like we will protect our life. If someone came to our home to harm us, we would defend ourselves with all that we have. We would say, we're not going to give it up. Right? The same with the heart. Why would you give your heart to shaitan after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you? 
This is why that dua, Oh Allah, do not allow my heart to deviate, right? رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا Oh Allah, do not allow my heart to deviate, deviate after you have guided it. You guided me, Ya Allah. You allowed me to accept Islam. You brought me to this point, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then all of a sudden, from one moment to the next, my heart goes into this fluctuation. My heart goes into this uneasiness. My heart goes into this unrest. My heart has been given to someone who can't be trusted because this individual does not have faith. This individual is not a believer. This individual may be weak in his iman. And because of that, my Islam begins to go out the window and out the door. I tell you this because I love you for the sake of Allah, brother and sister. I know life is difficult. I know life is challenging. I know life can be frustrating. I know we have and we're facing all types of anxieties. But this heart, we have to give it to Allah. And if we give it to Allah, Wallahi to Allah, wa billahi, things may still seem bad. But I can promise you that at the end of it all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you and reward you with something amazing. You just need to hold on. You just need to hold on. Don't let go. It's like you're hanging on this cliff and, and, and you're holding on for dear life and you're waiting for someone to come save you and, and, and you're slipping and, you, and you're trying to grab back on and your hand slips and you're trying to grab back on. The only one we have is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold on with your dear life. This is why the Prophet sallallahu he said, bite down, right, on the Quran and the Sunnah with your mola teeth and don't let it go. They're your strongest teeth in your mouth, the molars. Bite down on it and don't let it go. Hold on. This is why the Prophet said, there's going to be a time when holding on to faith is like holding on to hot coal. It's hard. It's difficult. You, it burns. It hurts. But wallahi tallahi wa billahi, that pain, that struggle, that suffering, right? Whatever, that anxiety, that depression, everything that you're going through, through trying to hold on to your faith, inshallah ta'ala, if you can hold it a bit longer, if you can hold on to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help free you from your state. He'll help free you and change the state that you're in. Because he's Rabbuna, Jalla Jalalu, he is our Lord, exalted and praised be he. He is the glorified, the exalted, the majestic, the sublime. We believe that He exists and we believe that He wants good for us. Ya Allah, we know that we're going, we're going through these difficulties, but we're trying to hold on, brother. Don't lose it. Right? Hold on with all your might. And this is why unity and brotherhood is so important. Because sometimes... You know, your brother is holding on to the rope and sometimes you may have to hold on to that rope with him. You may have to hold on to the strings of his heart and say, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm here with you. And this is part of what we're trying to do at Mass with the Revert Reconnect. We want you, inshallah ta'ala, to have a source that you can hold on to. We want to help you. Even the brothers and sisters that have stepped out of Islam Maybe born Muslim and they're coming back and they don't went through all the nonsense. We went through in Jahili as well. And they're finally returning back to Allah and giving themselves back to Allah. We're trying to hold on to you and help you as well. And sometimes you got to help your brother and you got to help your sister because that is what this brotherhood is about. That is what this belief is about. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said if the believer, if he is hurt, if he is in pain, his brother and his sister feel the same pain. Just like the body goes into fever when a part of the body is going through illness. That the entire body feels the pain and the hurt. Our hearts must be together in this journey, brothers and sisters. We're trying to travel to the same place, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is why we can't have hatred of one another. This is why we can't backbite one another. This is why we can't talk about each other. This is why we shouldn't be slandering one another. This is why we shouldn't be looking down upon each other. Because the same place is paradise, is the place that we're all trying to get to. And all of our hearts got problems. 
all of our hearts got problems. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the solution. He has given us the key, ibadullah. He says, so the battle between the soldiers of shaitan and the soldiers of ar-Rahman rages in the hearts. The battle between the soldiers of shaitan and the battle between the soldiers of Allah, the malaika, rages in the hearts. They're trying to invite you to two different things, subhanAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending you the angels so that they can invite you to paradise, brothers and sisters. Allah wants paradise for you. Don't think any different. This life is transient. We're just passing by. We won't be here long. And if we don't do what we need to do here, what is going to happen in the next life when we're going to be there forever? Remember that on Yawmul Qiyamah, death is going to be slaughtered in the, and Allah is going to have an angel yell out, there is no more death after today. Wherever you are, that is going to be your makan, your place forever. Except men, rahimallah, men whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon. So he says, the heart is flooded with whispers from shaitan to try and tempt and confuse it. These include introducing doubts about what Allah revealed, right? And many of us have these doubts, brothers and sisters. Many of us run through these different things. SubhanAllah, we have these doubts that come into our mind. Oh, but what about this? Oh, I don't need to wear this. Oh, I don't need to do that. Oh, I don't need to. And SubhanAllah, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa and Betrus. Right? Don't allow... Shaitan to play with you in your heart and those doubts. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, right? The halal is clear and the haram is clear. And what is between both of those things is the mutashabihat. Those doubtful areas, those areas that are gray, don't play in those areas. Those are areas of trouble. He says, number two, without iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one thing that grants human stability and meaning, the heart bounces from one thing to the other, looking for this elusive meaning and satisfaction. When it fails to find what it needs, it quickly moves to the next thing, right? That the human being is when his heart is all over the place, subhanAllah. And if you don't find that quick pleasure, because that's what most of us are looking for. We're looking for the blue pill or the red pill. Let me say the red pill, the blue pill, not use that one. The red pill, and we take, we want to take the red pill, and the red pill is automatically supposed to solve all of our problems. I took Shahada yesterday, and tomorrow all of the problems that I've been created for the last 20 years for myself are supposed to dissipate and go away. How? How? You got 20 years of work that you don't put in, of issues and troubles. It just doesn't go away with the shahada. Yeah, your sins have been wiped clean with the shahada, my brother and my sister. Allahu Akbar. But it doesn't mean that your issues go away. You may still have to confront your issues. You may still have to battle them. You may still have to fight against them. You may still have to remain in that battle conscious. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now given you new tools, a new set of weaponry, so that insha'Allah ta'ala, you can succeed in this battle against your demons. And he says that the heart of the human being suffers from a good deal of immaturity. He says, Ibn Qayyim states that the human self is ignorant and has tendencies to rush into foolishness because we don't think about things, right? We don't contemplate, we don't ponder, we just do. The heart that has Iman, on the other hand, tends to be more stable and heavy. 
meaning it's firm. And it is not easily moved by harmful suggestions and bad influences. Allahu Akbar. So the heart that has Iman <laughs> is that beautiful heart that when those suggestions and that whisper comes to it, subhanAllah, it gets in that Tai Chi stance and it's ready to battle it out. Right? You ain't going to win here. Subhanallah. Right? It is the heart that is ready. It is the heart that is not going to accept loss. It is the heart that is not going to be put down. It is not the heart that is going to be weighed down by something else. It is the heart that is going to repel everything that comes its way, insha'Allah ta'ala. Or at least it will try its best to. He says, the heart much more than our bodies is susceptible to sickness and influences around it. Yet many of us allow everything to flow into it without attention to the damage that it may cause. We let everything into our hearts, brothers and sisters. Not knowing that that is giving us heart disease. <laughs> and this is the real heart disease, the heart disease that brings a weakness of Iman. It is worse than a heart attack. We allow our eyes to look at everything, our ears to listen to everything, and our tongues to say and comment on everything under the sun. But doesn't this all affect our hearts? When you see that thing, when you hear it, when you talk about it, it all affects the heart, my brother and my sister. This is why we are so emotional. We're emotional beings, subhanAllah. When we get hurt, it's because the heart is in pain. And we don't realize that all of the, these different things can be things that are hurting, hurting our heart, ruining our heart. We fail to filter out the content that feeds the instability in our hearts and plants pain and foolish desires in them. When we get bored, a symptom of the longing in our hearts for meaning, we feed this boredom with images and words that further damage our hearts. Because we think that in order to solve my pain, I need to drown my pain in something that's going to give me some type of joy some laughter, some humor. Take my, take my mind off of it. But what about drowning your heart in the Qur'an? What about drowning your heart in du'a? Look at uh, Ya'qub uh, alayhi salatu wassalam. When he lost Yusuf, subhanAllah, he drowned his eyes and his heart in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in du'a so much so that he went blind. He cried so much that he went blind. What about that type of trying to drown our fears in the Quran so that the Quran can be the very source that uplifts us and changes us and helps us and repairs us, Ya Allah. And he says, this is why when one hears about the Dajjal, the Prophet ﷺ said, stay away from him because I swear by Allah, the one who believes he has faith would come to a Dajjal and would follow him because of the doubts that he sends or that are sent along with him, subhanAllah. Meaning never think that your Iman is that strong. Never think that can't happen to me. I'll never fall into that. I can do this and I'll be okay. Because you may test yourself in a particular type of way, my brother, my sister, and you may fall victim to something else. I could smoke all the herb I want. I'm still going to have Iman and Khushur until you fall into something much deeper. And then you found yourself lost and disconnected altogether. We need to be careful, brothers and sisters. He says, we should not throw ourselves into the fire unnecessarily. We may believe that we have a healthy immune system, 
but we do not test it by exposing ourselves to every disease around us. Subhanallah. Can you hear that? And I want to bring that around today to where we're at now, inshallah ta'ala, in, in, in our time period. We may believe that we have a healthy immune system. We may believe that our iman is strong. We may believe that our tawakkal is strong. We may believe that our, confined, our, our confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong. But we do not test it by exposing ourselves to every disease around us. Meaning we don't go put ourselves out in the open saying, Bismillah, I have Iman and I believe in the decree of Allah. And if Allah doesn't decree it, it's not going to happen. Don't test your faith like that. Don't go out into the world thinking that you could be amongst the people with COVID everywhere. And I don't have to worry. Wear a mask for what? Wear gloves for what? Don't even worry about it. This is foolishness. Where is your tawakkal? Where is your reliance? Where is your dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Believer, don't think that you're that strong. Don't think that your iman is unshakable, unbreakable. Don't test Allah like that. Don't put yourself in a place where you're testing your immune system and then you find out how weak your immune system and your iman really is when you're laying in the bed, God forbid, Allah forbid, and you can't breathe and you can't, you're gasping for air and you're wondering, why did I do this? May Allah never test any of us like that. We need to have trust, but we need to tie our camel. We need to have confidence and reliance, but we need to tie our camel. <coughs> we shouldn't be testing our iman like that. He says, in fact, we should take precautions and distance ourselves from it. Whatever the fitna may be, COVID-19, uh, um, sex, drugs, uh, parties, Clubs, you name it, whatever it may be, stealing, killing, gangs, whatever it may be, you stay away from it. Don't test yourself like that, believer. Our hearts need more care than our bodies. Our hearts need more care than our bodies. The life of the earliest pious Muslims displays the delicate care they treated their hearts with, especially when they feared harm. The way they left reading specific books, the way they left sitting with specific people, the way they left accepting specific gifts and money, the way they left working in specific professions demonstrates that they put safety of their hearts above everything else. Because, yeah, you may think, I'll do it for a little while, then I'll get out. But the reality is, are you going to get out? You don't know. And this is why al dahabi he said, in Siyar al-Alam al-Nubala, he says, the hearts are weak and doubts are aggressive snatchers. The hearts are weak and the doubts are snatching the stuff up out of your heart. So he says, Allah says, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. He says, indeed, we are going to send down a heavy word. This revelation, a heavy word. One of the ways in which the Quran is heavy is that it gives stability to human life and heart. The Quran gives stability to human life and the heart. Those who desire comfort and clarity for their hearts should seek it from the Qur'an. We should be more finicky and careful about what we allow in our hearts than the ingredients we place in our foods. You know how you have that individual who goes to the supermarket and he's like, don't take color number red, don't take number yellow, don't take number green, don't do the whatever the long word like this that be on the back of the box is, right? Don't eat those things because they're damaging to your health. They're going to do things to you. They're haram, right? You have those individuals that subhanAllah, they say, you can't eat from the people of the book. You can't eat at McDonald's. You can't do this. You can't go to Burger King. You got to preserve what you're eating. But wallahi, they're involved in all other types of haram. What is the good that what you're feeding yourself is haram in your mouth? I mean, halal in your mouth, but everything that you give to your heart is haram.
What kind of care is that? It's backwards. It makes no sense. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us from that, brothers and sisters. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being those type of individuals who think that we are righteous in a certain specific act in Islam and then we neglect the most important thing, our heart that is king. And we feed this whatever. But the body, I'm healthy. Mm. Beard, look at my hair, healthy. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. What about your heart, ya ibadullah? Aina qalbak. Where is your heart? Some of us need to ask Allah for our hearts because some of us have not been given one. As we seek to protect our hearts and guard them, let's also protect the hearts of the people around us. Right? What I was talking about before, that brotherhood. Let's not add to their agitation and confusion. Let us not invade their peace with sin and unkindness. My beloved brothers and sisters, the heart is very important, inshallah ta'ala, and it is the reason we are taking this journey together, brothers and sisters, because we want to make sure that our hearts are salim as we learned last week that nothing enters paradise illa man at, uh, illa, uh, except uh, man at Allah bi kalbin salim, except the one who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean, purified heart. We need to care for our hearts, brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, and give more importance to our hearts. Stop using that false statement that is very deceptive. Oh, Allah knows what's in my heart, brother. He does. Do you? He does know what's in your heart. Do you know what's in your heart? Because if you don't, that's trouble. And it's okay to be broken. <laughs> Wallahi, it's okay to be broken. It's okay to be broken. It's okay to be hurt. It's okay to be in pain. It's okay to be imperfect. It's okay to not be, to be feeling like you don't have faith. It's okay as long as you're acknowledging that that's where your heart is at and then you're turning to the one who can fix it, Allah. The problem is when you're broken and you don't want to admit you're broken. When you're in pain and when you're suffering and you don't want to admit that you're in pain and you're suffering. When you lack faith and you don't want to admit that you lack faith. That's when the heart has an extreme disease. It is on stage four. It is on the verge of death in that state. You're about to fall out and need to be shocked. Boof. And be brought back to life. But it's okay to present yourself as broken, brother and sister. Allah doesn't expect you to be perfect. Allah expects you to be genuine. Allah doesn't expect you to be perfect, but Allah expects you to be genuine when it comes to Him. And if we're genuine, we are good, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our hearts, to cure our hearts. Ya Allah, if our hearts are sick, Ya Allah, heal them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are broken slaves. Ya Allah, we are broken. You are your broken slaves. Ya Allah, we are your poor slaves. Ya Allah. We, Ya Allah, are in complete need of you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, everything that we do, every move that we make, Ya Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, we are in need of you because without you we have nothing, Ya Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we are suffering, we are in pain, we are, we are going through trials, we are going through tribulations, Ya Allah, and we are in need, in need of you and we implore you and we call upon you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we know that you are all hearing, that you are all wise, you are all seeing, that you are all capable, that you are present, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know our state better than we know our state, Ya Allah. Do not allow us to be from those who are delusioned by ourselves, Ya Allah. Do not allow us to be delusioned by ourselves, Ya Allah, so much so that we lose ourselves. 
Ya Allah, keep us connected. Ya Allah, allow us to still have the heart as an umbilical cord connected to you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we can continue to pump that blood of Iman and that blood of Quran and that blood of Sunnah into this heart that we need so badly, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, have mercy on us and forgive us, Ya Allah, and enter us into your paradise. And may the peace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the most glorious, the most gracious, be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.